Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Would you like even more content? Here's my Patreon. Now onto the stories. Case file number 1275, written by Worthless Commotion, The Midnight Double. My husband recently took an overnight job to help us out. He's only been out there for two weeks and works overnights and evenings, 9pm to 6am. Last night was no different. He left home around 8.15pm. Our daughter, age 11, and I decided to make it a movie night. Around 11pm, I heard keys in my back door and the usual sounds my husband makes when he comes home. I creeped out to the kitchen to make sure it was him and it was. He told me he needed to grab his knee compression sleeve, walk down the hall, said hi to our daughter as he passed the living room, and went upstairs. He came back down, gave me a kiss, and left again. We finished our movie and went to bed. In the morning, when he got home, I made a joking comment about him forgetting his knee sleeve. He was genuinely confused as I recalled the previous night. Our daughter confirmed everything I said and he was still acting confused. I pulled up our security motion camera on my phone to show him when he popped in quickly, but there was no footage from the night before or any other night of him coming home after he's left for work. My daughter and I both heard him, saw him, and I touched him, but he was never home during that time. Nothing else out of the ordinary happened that night. We seriously have no idea what happened. Case notes are filed 1275, The Midnight Double. I was thinking this would be a classic soul travel episode, but the lack of him on camera is wild and inexplicable. Souls appear on camera like anything else, they're not vampires immune to mirrors or reflections. So what on earth could this be? A doppelganger doesn't seem right, those evoke strong emotions of fear, even dread in those near them. I also read further in the comments that the knee compressor was gone. Your husband remembers having it all night and never coming home to get it. This has all the signs of being in a new universe, but why would you and your child have jumped over? But then again, random death and all that does happen. Just recently I saw a video of a residential home literally blowing up entirely. Not sure what the reason was for it, but stuff like that can happen. Perhaps on a similar note this happened to you and now you're in a different universe. It would explain everything, but it's very rare, of course. Creepy file number 117 written by American Cheese the day the school genius vanished. There was a kid in another class at my school in 6th grade that was a genius. I don't mean like, oh, he's really smart because he doesn't need to do the homework and still gets a hundreds. Like he was doing advanced calculus with a local college professor after school. This kid was smarter than everyone. So one day, our computer system for the entire school goes down. I was in a poorer area at the time, so this was normal. This has occurred many times so normally wouldn't affect us because we barely use laptops and such. The only class that wasn't affected was the computer class. This kid was in that computer class. Three or so hours later, when I'm in class with him during social studies, three guys with FBI jackets on and our local chief escorted him out of the building. We were told nothing. The parents were told nothing. It never hit the news. To this day, we have no clue what he did. Except, every single teacher I've asked about this says they were also told nothing. I haven't seen the kid since and I can't find a trace of him going on to another school or ending up in trouble. He just fell off the face of the earth with his parents. Yeah, I forgot to mention that parents also disappeared and no one really looked for them after a month or so. Case notes for the creepy file number 117. The day the school genius vanished. So a boy genius who hacked into the FBI mainframe and got on the radar? They most likely recruited him. This happens far more often than you might imagine or think. Even outright criminals get brought in if the agency thinks they can extract enough value out of them. Weighted against the crime in question, but in this case, I guess especially him being young, they can let it go and slide and just say, well, he's going to grow up to be an incredible asset. And of course, his parents would go into witness protection. Something along those lines, I would guess. That kid has an interesting future ahead of him. <laughs> Bonus file written by Character Limit Sue When Fearful Screams Echoed Through the Halls A few years ago, I was volunteering with some friends in a remote region of Tanzania. 
We were there to teach English, but it was total volunteerism. Very few people in the region spoke English because it was completely unnecessary. The type of charity work someone thought up in a boardroom a thousand miles away. Anyway, we were staying in this old hotel up on the top floor, maybe like 6th floor. We chose the top floor for the views, but it also gave us privacy. The hotel was way oversized for the small town it was in. We were more or less the only people staying there. There were probably 20 rooms on the floor and it was all very open. On each floor, a central tiled staircase opened straight into a lobby with the rooms accessed via various hallways. We had two rooms, with two of us in each. The rooms were basic but clean, all tiled. There was also an open window above each door so we could shout out to our friends staying in the room next door. We'd been there a couple of months and got used to having the place to ourselves. No one ever came up beyond the ground floor except the maids on occasion. One of the quietest places I've ever slept. That was until one night. I woke up to see my friend sitting bolt upright. We could hear someone running on the stairs a few floors below. The slapping of the feet on the tiles echoed up the staircase as they ran. Then they started screaming. I saw a woman scream and was guttural, absolutely raw and animalistic. It was a while ago, but I can still hear it clearly. She eventually reaches our floor and starts banging on doors. She's still screaming. She's screaming for help and coming down our corridor. She sounded terrified. By this time I was up, had grabbed a knife we'd bought to cut fruit. Lord knows what I thought I was going to do with it, and I was heading for the door. Just as I reached it, my friend grabs me and drags me back. He gestures for me to stay quiet. I would trust this guy with my life, so I do as I'm told. We stand there in silence in the dark. The woman reaches our thin wooden door. She's slapping on it and screaming out for help. We can hear her so clearly because of the open window above. She's also just a couple of feet away. She's crying out and sobbing, scratching at the door. My friend and I stand in silence just on the other side. We're frozen, honest to God, I was terrified. After about 10 minutes, we hear her receding down the corridor, no longer crying out so loudly. We hear other people's voices in the stairs and then nothing, as the place falls silent again. I turn to my friend, who looked me dead in the eye. Calmly, he explains, She was shouting in English, mate, all the way. She knew we were here. She knew what door to come to. She also wasn't alone. I heard footsteps on the floor before you woke up. They were trying to get that door open so they could rob us. Had you opened that door, they would have done so. Suddenly, I felt a bit ridiculous with my little fruit knife. I just sat in stunned silence. It made sense. Before long, my friend went back to sleep and I was left with my thoughts. To this day, I have no idea if my friend was right. It still sits with me, whether we could have helped someone that night or not. My gut tells me my friend was right, he usually is. But man, when I think back to how close I came to opening a door. We spoke to the manager and staff next day. None of them had any idea what we were talking about. They were very apologetic though, and even set up a security watch for the rest of our stay. Okay, so for the bonus file. When fearful screams echoed through the halls. So yes, it's true, there's a common tactic of robbers in hotels, even at people's primary residences, to have a woman in distress bang on the door, cry out for help, so you'll lower your guard and open it up for them. Easier than breaking the door down or lockpicking it, if they can even do so. Most people are not the lockpicking lawyer, so you get this kind of strategy instead. That said, while this could be the case here, something about the description of the screen being so guttural suggests to me a more supernatural force, especially since management didn't know what you were talking about. Surely they would have heard it too. Although, because there's no one else in the hotel, pretty much as you described, no one else heard it, but they would, because they're, they worked there. And in that case, why not call the cops? I mean, there are still cops in Tanzania, I'm pretty sure, right? So my guess is, this happened to other people who stayed in that hotel before, and they don't want to bring light to it, because it's not something you'd want to bring attention to. I mean, I doubt Haunted Hotel has a positive tourist factor. <laughs> Maybe for us in the US, but not everywhere. <laughs> and now time for the quote of the day. Be not afraid of growing slowly. Be afraid only of standing still. Chinese proverb.
Yeah, it's the adage of if you're not moving forward, adapting, changing, improving, then you're actually sliding behind because the world is moving in its own right and everyone is progressing. So if you're stagnant, you're left behind. So yeah, you don't have to rush it, but always think of ways you could be improving your life. Make progress. Life is a video game in so many ways. Yeah, you don't have numbers above your head or a, a character screen with all the skills leveled to certain, you know, denominations so you can know, oh, I'm at 99 woodcutting or something like that. I would love if that was the case, but sadly, everything is hidden and it's all just up here. And so even if you're high level, you may prevent yourself from acting on that because of your own mindset. Believe in yourself and try to make some progress. Don't have to rush it. Just some. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.